Tonight is March the 13th, 2015, and um, I've got a project here. I probably won't get it all done tonight, but I want to show you what I'm going to do. This is a DIY Poseidon board, which is a retrofit, upgrade, whatever you want to call it, for this Dynaco Mark III. And uh, I really like it. I've had it in there for quite some time. <clears throat> Uses a 12x7 here, one section of it, and a 12u7 here. Or you can play around with it and try your 12bh7s or whatever you want. You can even rewire the filaments and use the uh, oh darn, what is it called? I can't think of it right now. Anyway, that's not important. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to do some extensive testing on this. I'll, I'm going to show you how I do it and post my data try to make not make it too long and then I'm going to pull this board out and put this one in this is the old style this is the one that uses the 6AN8 I have very carefully and lovingly picked hand picked each component in here they're all spot on 390 picofarads etc everything they call for even a matched set of 0.25s. I believe they both measure exactly 0.256. And I'm going to compare the two. I'm going to do the very best I can to document the difference between this, what we would think of as an upgrade and, and the old original style 6AN8. I have a box load of 6AN8, so I'll very carefully go through there and pick out the very best ones. <clears throat> okay. What I have right now is it set up so that I have a pair of 6550s, some old Jan 6550s. They turn out marvelous. Uh, I'll say one good thing, one really good thing about this Poseidon board that I like here that this one does not have, and that is it has a, a balance pot right here. And what that means is when I look at the plate current of V4, which is this one, here's my plate current, See, it's 64 milliamps. Supposed to be about 70. And see, that one is 66. Well, they do drift a little bit. There's, there's no way to keep them absolutely within a milliamp or two all the time. But with this little pot right here, I can actually, uh, I can actually balance that. Let me put my screwdriver in there. I'll show you. They've been on for quite some time. See, that one is 66 milliamps. This one is 64. So I'll make it 65. So as one goes up, the other one goes down. And see, there's 65. Just, I mean, just spot on. The uh, screens of this, uh, of these two tubes right here, even though they're quite old, you see it jump around a little bit when things turn on and off. Let's see, that's about 5.8 milliamps. Uh, the, the screen of the other one is about 5.3 milliamps. So I have a, <clears throat> I have my tubes really, really nicely matched in there. I don't think it can get much better. So I'll run some extensive tests, show you what they are. I won't belabor it and uh, show you the test running all the time. I'll, I'll show you how they start and everything and how they end. And we'll test this one extensively. That's the only thing we'll change. And then when it's all said and done, we'll, I'll swap this board out, this entire board, for this one. And we'll, uh, I'll hand select a, uh, the best 6AN8 I have here. I've hand selected these, this 12AX and 12AU7 here. And we'll see how they compare. We're not going to, one thing that I know we're going to miss is being able to balance the, the uh, cathode currents, the plate currents, however you want to look at the actual, actual plate currents. We can't balance the plate currents here. We can set the bias right here and adjust the plate current, but we can't we can't balance the two. So that's one thing we're going to be missing on this board and I think it's going to make a difference. Let's see how it turns out. While the tubes are cooling and that's going to take quite a while, I've got a bunch of projects cooking right now that I want to show you about. See this transformer right here? That's an output transformer. It's the exact matched one to this guy right here where I run those uh, three 500Zs now. 
I am going to play some music for you. I want you to hear them. They sound great. I do want to put them through some speakers that can handle the power and measure SPL, sound pressure level, and compare it to something. Maybe the old Macintosh uh, 2205 I have. Uh, I've gotten a bunch of uh, 810s right here. These are two actually brand new ones. Here's a filament transformer. This is the filament transformer it takes to light them. I've got uh, three more right here. I'm going to be really careful. They're in there. Trust me, there's one. Anyway, so I've got five of them. I always like to have a number of spares before I start. Um, I'm going to use this transformer, which I believe this transformer was actually made for a pair of 810s. It hasn't seen 810s probably in 50 years, but I'm going to build another amplifier of this quality, quantity. It'll be in this cabinet. I'll just change the taps on the, on the transformer and lower the voltage down a little bit. I think the maximum voltage uh, they won't. I believe I'm going to be very careful. I just sure don't want to bust them. About 2,500 volts or so. Won't be able to get any kind of power out of them like I can those. See, there it is right there. 2,250 volts. I got to have a bias supply. Minus 60 volts. See, there's 11,600 ohms plate to plate. Plate to plate which is what those transformers will give me. 13 watts to drive and 725 watts output. So that's a project. Um, another one, I just got in these tubes right here. These Telefunken KT88s. It says they're called um, Telefunken Black Diamond Series. I am really impressed with these things. This is an actual, really honest to goodness, match quad. They perform really nice. I put them in my old Macintosh MC275. I don't get these things in and just test them and go wow and then move on within 10 minutes. You got to test them. You got to live with them. You got to touch them, feel them, smell them. You know what I mean. And uh, before you really make a uh, decision, these are new. They're probably made in China. It says right here done in cooperation right there with JJ tubes. I did find out that these are the tubes that come in the uh, new Macintosh equipment. Macintosh, you know, makes a 2102. I believe that's what it's called. It uses eight of these guys. 100 watts per channel. They're also uh, making new the uh, MC75 uses these tubes. My guess is, is these are the, um, the very cream of the crop top of uh, the two production and they brand them and sell them, uh, you know, for the, for the higher end equipment if you want to pay the price. They're, they're, they're rather pricey, they're 80 bucks a piece. But you pay that much or more for the, the, uh, the older uh, NOS, assuming they really are NOS, and uh, they perform very well. I'll, I'll have to make a video of it, of how they perform. So those are some of the projects I've got cooking right now. Um, I can't think of anything else at the moment, but i got a bunch that I want to make. I just haven't had a lot of time lately. So let's get started on, the, on this project. Okay, it is being scanned right now. I also want to mention that I did adjust the bias right here up to where I got 70 milliamps per tube. That's what Dynaco recommends. I know they weren't at that when I uh, showed you what the readings were here, but I did make that adjustment. Right here is what it's running at. It started out at about 0.3% THD. Let me turn out some lights here. About 0.3% THD, running it at 17.66 volts across 8 ohms. That's, uh, you have to square that and divide it by 8 to get its power. That's all the uh, 8903 wants to put out. 
I can raise it higher than that, but I can't run but one sweep at that rate. It's a little complicated. Anyway, there it is. Uh, it does really good at low frequencies. It, it's only a half percent. Oh, a little, maybe 12 kilohertz or so. At 20 kilohertz, it's up to, uh, let's see, there's one and a half. It's up to about 1.3% at 20 kilohertz. That's pretty consistent with what I get out of these Dynacos. It's not bad. But that's what it is. Uh, I can run it again and again and again, and each trace will overlay the other one. I can up, uh, raise the power slightly. It, we don't have to run it at, at its absolute maximum power. I just don't think that's the point. Uh, I'm going to swap out the board. Now, I'm going to swap out this guy right here. Better turn some lights back on here. I'll get my finger down in there. Now i got to swap this board out for this one. And make it as uh, best I can the same and, and run it again. And let's see. Once and for all. Okay, this, this board is ending up doing some interesting things. This is uh, one of three 6A-N8s that I've used. Here's two others. This one gave me like 6% THD. I don't remember this one. This one seems to be the best one so far. And I've known this for decades, that these amplifiers with the original 6A-N8 uh, driver board are much more dependent on the quality of the 6AN8 than they actually are the output tubes or the rectifier. True. Okay, here it is running at 20 volts cross 8 ohms, which is 50 watts, at a kilohertz, right there, 1000.8. It is only 0.4%, 0.35. And it looks pretty good. I'll show you some, uh, let me turn this light off here. I'll show you what it looks like after it runs a while. Let's let this one start running. It's a little disappointing, but I don't think it's too surprising. See there, it's about 1.3% THD at 50 watts. With one of the best 6A-N8s I have. While this one is running, I'll minimize it. I'll show you what it looks like uh, let's see, at 25 watts, 24 watts I believe it is. See it starts at about 0.4% down here and at 20 kilohertz it's about 0.9% because see there's the 1%. It's not bad. Not really terrible. Not anything we'd want to throw in the trash can. But let's see what this uh, this new one looks like, the one that we're running right now. 20 hertz, 1.3 percent. Yeah, this level right here unfortunately is not reported correctly all the time. It, it's what the uh, program puts out and receives and decides that's the number, but you can change it over at the, uh, at the panel by taking it offline and setting it manually. The, uh, drive level. Well here it is. It's coming out here. So at 20 hertz it's 1.3 percent. At 20 kilohertz it's about 1.3 percent. Wow right there. Perfect little perfect little curve huh? From 20 to 20 kilohertz. 1.3 percent. Down here in the most of the range 40 hertz right there. It's uh, down at 0.4 percent or below. It's not bad. The 6AN8 is not something you want to put in a trash can, but uh, it does seem that the um, that the Poseidon board, I don't know if it outperforms it or not. It, it, it seems to have a slightly different curve at the high end. This guy right here, over the original Dynaco design. Let's look back again. That's okay. That's, that's at 50 watts. That's not bad. I wouldn't put that in the trash can. Okay, now let's go back here. First, 6AN8. Oh yeah, that was really horrible. Look at that. 
I mean, it started out way up there, so I said, no, we, we don't even want to use that one. That's a bad tube. Okay, here's the Poseidon board right here. 0.4%, ignoring that little glitch right there. At 20 kilohertz, it's up at 1.5%. It actually seems like the original Dynaco 6AN8 has a better uh, high frequency response. This one does better at the low frequencies. Turn the damn light out. Gotta study this thing. Look at this. Pretty good. Look at that curve. That's the Poseidon board. The best I can do with it. The best 12AX7 and the best 12AU7 I got. And then when we go to the uh, Dynaco at 50 watts, there it is. It's actually less THD at the high end. Right there. At the 50 watt level. About 0.9. It goes from. I don't want to look at that right. I got too many of these damn things. Dynaco at um, at 24 watts. Okay. Um, no, I'm, I've still got this one active. There it is. There's one we want at 50 watts. One that they would probably present us with. 1.3 to 1.3. 20 to 20 kilohertz. There it is. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little surprised. I'm not surprised about the quality of the 6AN8. The curse there is, is nobody makes 6AN8s anymore. So, you know, you're at the mercy of uh, the eBay sellers, and, you know, you're going to have to buy 10 of them. And you're going to have to have some pretty sophisticated equipment like I do here to actually test it. But the uh, old Dynaco design... Is it all bad? And I'm not sure that I don't like it just as well. In some cases, possibly better. I'm going to leave this one in for a while. It's on, so I've got to be careful. Zap myself. That's the uh, original. This is, of course, a, a new PC board. And this is not a piece of junk. I like this. I, I really like the fact that you can uh, you can balance the two. But uh, they end up about the same with the. Uh, ever so slightly different characteristics. So I hope this helps. Hope you enjoy this stuff. I enjoy making it and uh, just can't get enough of it. I'll be making some more here soon with uh, all the other things I showed you earlier.